This is a short video update on a few additions that I have made to my scratch built beam engine that I built back in the summer of 2017. At the time I was planning on adding a few accessories but I never did get around to making these at the time and other projects came along which meant the engine was forgotten about until recently. The first addition to the engine was these two little drain cocks on the main cylinder. These are to allow the engine to one day be run using steam to allow any condensed water to escape via the cocks while the engine gets up to temperature. They are identical to the drain cocks made by Stuart Engines but these were bought from an eBay seller for about half the price and are perfectly in scale with the cylinder. Now any discerning beam engine needs to have a purpose and historically they were mostly used for pumping water on canal systems, water reservoirs or sewage systems such as my local beam engine at Clay Mills pumping station in Burton-on-Trent. So my model really needed a water pump of some description to fulfil its purpose. The pump is of a very simple design consisting of a brass cylinder with a piston driven from the beam, sucking water through a one-way valve system or at least it will be when I get around to building a functional valve block as at the moment it simply vents the air via a hole in the back of the block. It does have this lovely hand wheel valve though which would have operated a shut off valve to the main pipe work. But at the moment the pump don't work because the vandals took the handles. Of course the most exciting addition to my beam engine was always going to be a spinning flyball governor. One day I saw an advert online that caught my eye and I discovered these beautiful looking flyball governors made by a Chinese manufacturer called Microcosm. They make two versions of the governor as well as a selection of steam and combustion engines and a good array of parts and accessories for live steam and model engine making. And I immediately thought that one of these would complement my beam engine nicely. Both governors stand about 3.5 inches tall or approximately 85 millimetres in new money and they are made primarily of brass components including the bevel gearing and stainless steel shafts and fixings. There are two designs, this one made from flat bar stock design with two fly balls and a very nice lever design which operates the valve gear and the other type which has a more traditional looking style which has three fly balls which directly operate a plunger valve built into the base of the governor. The governors are driven via a small pulley wheel connected on the shaft of the bevel gear. The pulley wheels supplied with the governors were both slightly different, one with a knurled inner surface and the other was smooth and slightly wider. But I opted to make my own custom pulley with a recess which was more suited to the drive belt that I planned on using. Both units have connections for quarter inch pipe union nuts threaded to 40 teeth per inch model engineering standard and are supplied with nuts and cone nipples to suit one eighth of an inch copper or brass pipe to be soldered into. Both governors function by utilising centrifugal force so as the balls spin around the central shaft their mass is pushed outwards with inertia and this centripetal force activates the valve lever mechanisms, closing the valve and regulating the input of air or steam. To mount the governor on the engine I made a pedestal to elevate its position on the engine to clear the eccentric drive arm. This was drilled and tapped to create the air passage and a short length of brass tube was threaded to make the connection to the governor. The position was finalised and I marked out the base of the engine before partially disassembling the engine for drilling and tapping to suit the pedestal position.
I needed to disassemble the governor to rotate the orientation of the air input in relation to the drive pulley. It was fitted with four tiny M2 hex-headed bolts, which I struggled to remove as my spanner was just too big. So in reassembly, I decided to replace them with M2 socket screws to give me easier access and also to match the majority of the fixings already on the engine. The screws I had were a little too long, so I simply took them to the belt sander to shorten to length. They could now be easily reinserted using an Allen type screwdriver. When I first built the engine I had the foresight to turn a V-grooved pulley in the eccentric sheave to accept a drive belt for a future governor build. I experimented with a variety of drive belts that I had in my spares drawer as I originally wanted to use one of these mammod type metal spring drive belts. But ultimately settled on a rubber drive belt which gave the best grip. I just need now to rebuild the engine and test out the drive belt on the ball governor. Happiness is an oily engine. The governor was cleaned and lubricated and refitted back onto its pedestal, using some fibre washers to allow it to be tightened up into the correct position. The gear and pulley was refitted so that there was minimal play in the gear teeth but allowing the shaft to spin freely without any restriction. My final pulley belt choice was this red silicon rubber round profile belt which seemed to give the best compromise between grip on the pulleys without too much tension on the governor bearings. A short length of copper pipe was formed to connect the pedestal air chamber to the cylinder valve block and also a short length connected to the governor input to accept my air supply pipe. I could now connect this to my air supply manifold and start the engine running. A quick test of the drain cocks showed that they were working correctly and not leaking and the water pump is elegantly reciprocating being driven from the mid beam. The flyball governor rotates nicely, although it does not spin fast enough to activate the valve. 
but as you can see, it is functional if I give it a helping hand. I think it really needs a larger diameter pulley drive from the main engine axle to increase its velocity. But this is just a model after all, so I think I'll settle for its visual appeal over functionality this time, as I do not intend running the engine at these high speeds. These microcosm ball governors are very well made and are exquisitely beautiful in their miniaturisation of such a complex mechanical item. And for the cost, it really is a no-brainer. I could not make one of these for the price that they are available, and I cannot fault their quality of manufacture. Prices do vary around the web, but they are available either direct from the manufacturer or outlets such as eBay and Banggood in China who offer very competitive prices for many of the items in the range from Microcosm engines and who kindly sent me this pair of governors for review. See the links at the end of the video for details on where to buy one. The other governor was temporarily fitted to an aluminium block so that I could test it out with some of my other engines before I decided where to use it. And again, this is another beautifully elegant governor I also tried it on my mill engine with a flat belt pulley and it ran faultlessly. I may mount this on the back of the mill engine and pipe it up to the steam chest. Or I may possibly save it for a future engine where I can incorporate it into the design. So, I think after three years in construction, I can now call this engine finished. Well, apart from getting the handles back from the vandals. Thanks for watching. <laughs>